Because of the gasoline shortage, Mori Ambergetti has just come up with a new racing car that runs on prune juice. Now, Morio claims that it goes twice as fast, but it has to make twice as many pit stops. <laughs> Pollution of the Hudson River this morning reached a peak as the New York firemen had to extinguish a blaze by throwing chunks of water on it. The tribe of African pygmies announced today that they will compete in the 1976 Olympics. We don't expect to do too well in basketball or the shot put, said a spokesman, but wait till you see our eight-man pole ball team. Good evening, science fan. Barbara Nosh is here with the chief of the Japanese space program, Mr. Werner von Takamura. Hello, Russia, Shrady. Ha, ha, ha. Mr. Takamura, now, you claim that this rocket ship is radically new in design, but actually it looks to me exactly to be the one like the Apollo moon ship. Oh, for sure, but you see, all rocket look alike, but actually as well as well, big difference. What is the difference, sir? Oh, simple, simple. You see, uh, American engine go, but our go, hmm. <laughs> Porky Pig said today from his Bel Air home that because of the current meat shortage, he's turned down all invitations to barbecues. <laughs> Junior Senator Stu Krantz of Ohio was taken ill yesterday. The Senate wished him a speedy recovery by a vote of 64-35 with one vote undecided. <laughs> I can grow up to be big and tall like my daddy. <laughs> Is he tall? No. <laughs> Speaking of me, we're talking to Mr. Myron McTavish, owner of the famous McTavish hamburger chain. Hello, Mr. McTavish. Hello. Now, a uh, little question. Has the current meat shortage hurt your business? Are you kidding? If we don't get all the meat we need, we're going to be in real trouble. You see that sign? Yeah. yeah. We sold over 12 billion hamburgers. No kidding. Mm -hmm. That represents nearly nine pounds of ground beef. something i saw this guy play baseball many times he had one outstanding characteristic the constancy of failure i remember his last turn <laughs> count three and two crisis conditions the bottom of the ninth the base is loaded what did he do as always kevin chuck connor struck out and i remember turning to someone chuck and saying you know that's the last time we'll ever see chuck connor strike out again but i was wrong 
after seeing tonight's performance, how wrong I was. <laughs> I knew old Howard my baseball days. He was young, abrasive, caustic, and sometimes quite irritating. But Howard, after working with you tonight, I want to tell you something, pal, you really have changed. You, you really have changed. You understand that. I'm no longer caustic, abrasive, nor irritating. No, no, you're no longer young. Ladies and gentlemen, next to me is Billy Wooten, the oldest living football player in the world. He is still a tremendous physical specimen with a quick, alert, inquisitive mind. Billy, welcome to Window on the World. Hey. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, here. Oh. Yes. Note the numeral number five, so yes. reflective of Paul. I must Warner. have been clipped. <laughs> Please, please, sit down. Sit yeah. down. Billy. I'd rather stand. I'd rather stand. <laughs> You've been around a long time, oh, Billy. Time, yeah. You must have been there when they coined the word pigskin. Now, when did they first use it? In 1874, we first called it a pigskin. You mean to tell me that 99 years ago, pigskin was used to cover the ball? No, it was used to cover the pig. <laughs> We used to play with a live pig. Yeah, if you ever fumbled, goodbye, ball. <laughs> Billy, that's absurd. Of course it's absurd. That's why we changed to a chicken. <laughs> They're much lighter. Have you ever tried to kick off with a pig? <laughs> well, there you have it. But before you go, I've got a surprise for you. Ooh. I'm going to arrange it so you have a 50-yard line seat, Billy. Oh. To watch all of the ancient, old, tired, but not forgotten greats play the game. You mean this is for, for an old-timers game? Not at all. They're season tickets for the Washington Redskins. <laughs> Norman Lear, successful creator of Sanford and Son, Maude, and All in the Family, announced today that he had sold a new pilot to CBS, which involves a Jewish man married to a cowgirl. When asked what he would call the series, Lear replied, Shalom on the Range. <laughs> State your name and position. Arthur B. Jackson, White House Ice Cream Man. <laughs> Good idea. Arthur B. Jackson, White House Ice Cream Man. Now, Mr. Jackson, would you tell this committee what happened on the date of May 30th? At 8 in the morning, to the best of my recollection, Ms. Mr. Liddy came to my truck and ordered a dish of strawberry ice cream, telling me it was for Mr. Stans. About 10 minutes later, Mr. Magruder ordered a cone. I don't remember what flavor for Mr. Mardian, who in turn gave it to Mr. Comback, who tried to exchange it for a popsicle. <laughs> It was at this point in time that Mr. Dean asked for three banana splits for Mr. Ehrlichman, Mr. Haldeman, and someone whose name he would not disclose. Could you tell me then what happened next? I opened the back of my truck to get the ice cream and was surprised to see Mr. McCord hunched over in the ice cream department, attempting to place a bugging device in Mr. Ehrlichman's banana split. Order, please. Could we have order? What happened then? Mr. McCord paid me for the ice cream. Well, would you say about 30 cents? Oh, no. There were three banana splits, two hot fudge sundaes, and a rum baba. 
Well, how much did they give you? About $200,000. Some may think being a caretaker at a museum is a thankless and boring occupation. But for a man like myself, steeped in the aesthetics of creativity, it's illuminating to be amongst these great works of art. Indeed, I think there's nothing quite so awe-inspiring as the classics. Spit says, I'm never gonna touch another glass of milk as long as I live. <laughs>
no one the world. Because of the gasoline shortage, Morio Ambergetti has just come up with a new racing car that runs on prune juice. Now, Morio claims that it goes twice as fast, but it has to make twice as many pit stops. <laughs> of the Hudson River this morning reached a peak as the New York firemen had to extinguish a blaze by throwing chunks of water on it. A tribe of African pygmies announced today that they will compete in the 1976 Olympics. We don't expect to do too well in basketball or the shot put, said a spokesman, but wait till you see our eight-man pole ball team. <laughs> Good evening, science fan. Barbara Nosh is here with the chief of the Japanese space program, Mr. Werner von Takamura. Hello, Russia's lady. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, Mr. Takamura, now you claim that this rocket ship is radically new in design, but actually it looks to me exactly to be the one like the Apollo moon ship. Oh, for sure, but it was a barbecue. <laughs> Junior Senator Stu Krantz of Ohio was taken ill yesterday. The Senate wished him a speedy recovery by a vote of 64-35 with one vote undecided. <laughs> if I eat all my vegetables, I can grow up to be big and tall like my daddy. <laughs> Is he tall? No. <laughs> Speaking of me, we're talking to Mr. Myron McTavish, owner of the famous McTavish hamburger chain. Hello, Mr. McTavish. Hello. Now, a uh, little question. Has the current meat shortage hurt your business? Are you kidding? If we don't get all the meat we need, we're going to be in real trouble. You see that sign? Yes. Yeah. We sold over 12 billion hamburgers. No kidding. Mm -hmm. That represents nearly nine pounds of ground beef. I saw this guy. Gee, old rocket rook -rike. But actually, as wally wally big difference. What is the difference, sir? Oh, simple, simple. You see, uh, American engine go... <laughs> but I go... <laughs> Porky Pig said today from his Bel Air home that because of the current meat shortage, he's turned down all invitations.